It's the week of June 12, 2017, and you're listening to the Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy podcast. Today we catch up on a long drawn out planting season, discuss current crop conditions, and discuss current agronomy hashtags. I'm your co-host DuPont Pioneer Field Agronomist Josh Schaffner. With me is DuPont Pioneer Field Agronomist Brian Buck. Special guest DuPont Pioneer Emerging Leader Allie Ferguson is here to chime in as well. This is episode 8 of 2017. Welcome back listeners. All right, thanks Josh. Like Josh said, we got a great uh, show today. We're going to really go back through the planting season we had. It's been a pretty interesting spring up to this point and hit on some other agronomy topics. But first, our special guest Allie Ferguson is with us and why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, yeah, good morning everyone. Like Josh and Brian said, my name is Allie Ferguson. I grew up on a farm in southeast Iowa and then I attended Iowa State University and, and received my agronomy degree. And I'm now living in the great state of Minnesota, right in the southeast corner. And it's great to be here working with everyone in this geography. All right. Thanks, Allie. So uh, to get started today, we're going to go through quite a few different things. But I think, you know, the planting season in general has been a pretty big story up to this point. Um, Josh, and it started early with some maybe hesitation on the early plant. We had some tough weather in the forecast. And can you hit a little bit on that and where we're at to date with that? Yeah, I think if you go back to, you know, early April there, you know, Brian, kind of that middle April, April 15th to the 17th, we kind of had a window of planting there. And some some guys got after it and got some going. There was some hesitation because soil temps were pretty cold at that time. And certainly, you know, looking at some cold rain potential. So, you know, we had some growers, you know, get a jump start and some that kind of held back. So it kind of ended up being a really long planting season overall. Um, But, you know, you take a look at that and you're, we're looking at the crop now, which we'll discuss about. I, I don't think anyone made a mistake either way what they ended up doing, but uh, certainly I would say that that cool weather and the cold soils, you know, kind of got us off to a little bit of a, a slower start this year compared to last year. Yeah, it's always, you know, there's some corn plant, I think around was it April 24th, there was a small window there too, um, leading into when it got super cold or the forecast, there was a really cold rain coming. Uh, you know, a lot of that corn went in the ground with some cold temps in the forecast and that still uh, seemed to come up pretty good, even though it sat there for three weeks in some really cold, wet, wet soil. But uh, I think another big window we had after that, Josh, was kind of in that beginning of May time frame. Yeah, and I'd say that was probably our biggest window. We kind of rolled out of April there and um, <clears throat> kind of had a, a cool wet stretch there. And then, you know, really from May 5th through that Mother's Day, that was the heart of the planting season for corn in southeast and central Minnesota this year, where I would say probably three quarters of the crop went into that window. And, uh, and overall, it was a pretty good run of weather. You know, but for how wet we were in April, it was still, even after a week of good weather, Brian, we still had some fields that had some challenging planting conditions. Yeah, and it's always tough, you know, as the calendar starts to get away, it's easier to, you know, push things a little bit too, just soil condition wise. And um, it, it is it is one of the most challenging things. And there were some wet spots that never really dried out real well until uh, maybe even recently. But um, I think people that made the decision to go were happy. You know, around that Mother's Day weekend, I think was one thing to call out, I'd say that was maybe the toughest planting window, you know, hard to see when we were planting, soil conditions were great. But looking back, I think that created the biggest challenges for us overall. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And and crusting has certainly been the, I'd say the biggest topic of the whole planting season. If you planted around that Mother's Day weekend, you know, May 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, whether you were corn or beans at that standpoint, Allie, that was the window that probably led to the most problems we saw, especially where you're kind of working in that southeast Minnesota area uh, right now. That was, um, I guess to say the least, it was kind of a mess. Yeah, I think that's exactly right, Josh. You know, the conditions and the dates that you just mentioned are exactly what we're seeing in that southeast Minnesota corner, and it's definitely tough to see some of those fields um, looking a little rougher, if that's the proper term that I might use. Um, But I think, you know, things are continuing to improve. Um, We did have, have those replant situations in certain areas, but as we keep moving moving forward here, I think most folks are sitting in a in an okay position. Yeah, and certainly, uh, you know, you, you look at Twitter, the replant 17 things that have been out there, it's been a big thing, Brian. And, you know, we're I think for the most part, we wrapped most of the replant up last Friday, Saturday, you know, but still, that there's still some things out there that aren't perfect. But, um, you know, that's really been our last 10, 12 days, all three of us just been out running around trying to make decisions on replant. And I would say in, in the worst areas, and, and Allie chime in, you know, we might have replanted, you know, corn and soybeans together, you know, maybe 10, 12% of the fields in some geographies had to get touched up. Yeah, I think those percents you mentioned, they do align well with what, what I've been seeing in that southeast Minnesota corner. And there's certainly been years where we're seeing higher percents than that, but it's, you know, that 10 to 12% is still a significant hit um, 
but as we move forward, looking to see things improve. Yeah, so yeah, so long drawn out planning season. You know, Brian, we look at our Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy Trials. We'll have a lot of information come fall. We had a lot of plots go in really early, a lot go in right in that window. That was a challenge. And, you know, really we had some corn and bean plots that didn't go into Memorial Weekend or even into June. So we'll have a lot of good information on kind of how this spring, you know, uh, played out and kind of what the end result's going to look like. But but look, moving into the current crop conditions, Brian, uh, I think it's always important to, to kind of toss the alley first and give a GDU update. I think that's always important to kind of understand where we're at. Yeah, I think we'll just touch on a couple of different geographies here real quick. So if we were looking around that Rochester, Minnesota area, we're sitting around about 563 GDUs, which is about um, 12 units above the 10-year average. And when we look a little farther north around the Alexandria area, we're sitting around that 507 GDU range, which is actually trending 39 units above the 10-year average. So we're really at that point in the growing season that earlier this year, we were definitely trending behind. You know, a lot of cloudy days weren't really picking up many GDUs. But now as we move forward, we're, we're on that upward trend. And so when you take a look at fields, things are really moving quickly. Um, I know, you know, just a couple weeks ago, we were in a field on a Friday. We went back the following Tuesday and the the stand looked completely different in that the crop, especially the corn, is really staging quickly. So things are progressing quite qu- quickly as we move forward. Yeah, and that's an April 16 start date. I usually try to look at kind of when the first round of corn go when I calculate, but you always, if you're looking at your own operation, you always want to take a look at when was my planning date and adjust those calculators from there. You're know, looking at the current state of the crop, you know, if I had to look at kind of the area I cover, Brian, I mean, you know, there's some crops that, that look good and there's some that look challenging, but if I had to rate the crop as, as a whole, um, you know, it's tough to put the crop at a at a rating of, you know, at just average right now. You know, there if you just could put it all together, I, I can't find, say that it's good to excellent. I'm just going to say a big picture, the corn and beans look average, and I'll be curious to see kind of what you're seeing, Brian, in your geography. Yeah, I'd, I'd be similar to that, average to good. Um, you know, one thing, I, I think the, the rain probably made me a little more optimistic after we had that this weekend. Uh, things are getting pretty hard out there and pretty dry again. But uh, in general, the, there's some really great looking fields out there, but there's some that are just emerging because they're replanted too. So when you start averaging it all out, it is probably an average, maybe an average to good crop, but I'd, it looks average at this point overall. Variation and variability is probably the biggest thing. There's so many planning windows, so many planning dates, emergences, you know, pretty variable based on what we saw this year. So uh, pretty good overall, like you said, average. Allie, any comments for your geography? I think, you know, like Brian mentioned, obviously in our area, we are one of the situations where we do have that higher replant percentage. Um, So those crops are obviously much farther behind than the ones that were planted earlier. But all in all, those fields that we did get in in early and things were planted, the stands look strong, um, the crop looks great. I mean, we have had significant heat in the past couple of days, so you are going to see those plants tend to curl up a little bit, especially on some of those, you know, maybe heavier clay soils. But all in all, I think things are looking pretty good. All right, so Josh, you know, we talk about the current state of the corn and some of the stuff we've seen, and, um, you know, we've hit a little bit on it already, but uh, that crusting we saw earlier and then that super dry conditions, which were helped out this weekend by that rain. Uh, rootless corn syndrome is something that was starting to show up. Hopefully that will be uh, healed a little bit now that we've had some rainfall, but uh, rootless corn, so what ends up happening is uh, when you think about a corn planter, it's going down the field and it's leaving a trench, or, you know, puts the trench in and then drops the seed in the ground. Uh, you cover it, closing wheels cover it up, but as the ground gets super dry and dries out on top, it'll start to crack, almost like that drought symptom that you can see. And then sometimes it'll actually crack right down the road just where that original trench was, exposing the top of the roots where the roots don't really grow. Uh, it can be a, a, a concern. I think we're going to be out of the woods with it with the rain we had, like we said. But if you do see some where you don't have very good nodal growth on top, uh, that could be what caused it um, just from the weather that we have had this year. Uh, some things that I think make it worse, so, you know, shallow planting can affect it more, or if you plant it wet, you get that sidewall smear, and it tends to open it up a little bit more, I think, too. But uh, something to keep an eye on if you do have that lack of root growth at the top of your plant. Yeah, and looking at the soybean sign, Brian, I think when I look at the, the current crop condition, the biggest thing that stands out to me is just our final stand counts on soybeans. And in some cases, if you haven't went out there and done I'm sure a lot of you have to evaluate for just trying to determine if you're going to replant or not, but... Um, you know, we did some training last week and, and we had a lot of our team in and take a look at, at some of our plots and pull on the tape on some beans, which something we don't do a lot of. I mean, I'd say we do a lot of stand counts on corn, but sometimes the beans kind of get overlooked. But, you know, we look at where we dropped 140,000 seeds per acre. 
I mean, Brian, coming up with 75, 80, 90,000 was kind of the common theme. Yeah, you know, a lot of drop rates, I'd say, are around that 140,000. So you think about getting 80, 90 out of that. We had some tough conditions and that crusting, a lot of the beans went in through that crusting window because they planted them right after they got done with corn, which is pretty common. And and it just made them, there were still beans coming up too when we were out there, Josh, which was interesting. Just that emergence window was really wide. But, um, you know, when you think about maximum yield, you want to be over 100,000 plants. Um, I think a number we always use is at 90,000 plants, you're about 90, 90% of expected yield. So uh, there's going to be a little yield ding in some fields, I think, from the poor emergence. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, and Brian, let's kind of move into our agronomy hashtag segment. Uh, in this segment, we just kind of talk about what things might be trending here. And uh, and Brian, we'll let you lead off. Yeah, just a quick hitter that I saw. So um, corn or hatch is beginning. Uh, happens every year, usually about beginning of June, mid-June. Uh, so corn rootworm, the hatch begins based on GDUs or GDDs, the soil GDDs. So that goes back to January 1st. It's not since you planted your corn. So if you have April 16th planted corn and you had some replant June 1st, uh, those larvae are going to you know, hatch and be active the same whether you plant it early or late. Uh, one concern I'd call out there is if you do start to see some corn that's maybe a little slow, make sure you dig some roots, especially on the, the later planted stuff. Those are going to be pretty small plants that start to get fed on this year. Uh, so just to call out the hatch is beginning. Um, it's always something to look for as you're out scouting as the summer goes here. Yeah, and my hashtag of the week is, is just weeds. I always think of uh, the first half of June, I think about it's time to get the weeds under control. And, and uh, Brian, you were talking to me before the show, you didn't think the weeds were too bad, but you know, from the road, you know, a, a two to four inch weed isn't very big and that's when we want to get them. But uh, certainly the annual weeds are coming, um, getting through the cross that uh, I see a lot of annual grass and, and broadleafs coming. And uh, now is the time to make sure we get them under control. And uh, the other call out, Brian, I'm, I'm still seeing a little bit of uh, herbicide burn on some corn here and there. Uh, just always be watching those surfactant loads and what you're mixing in there uh, to try to make sure we get the weeds, but also try to keep the crop safe. And the hashtag I just wanted to hit on real quickly would be soybean aphids. You know, we are only in the mid-June time frame here, so a little bit early. Um, but it wouldn't be uncommon to see the very first soybean aphids, you know, maybe at least one per leaf on a few soybeans out there. I know in southwest Minnesota, I had seen some folks who had seen, you know, maybe three aphids per plant. So we're well away from that threshold. But just something to, you know, keep in the back of your mind as we continue on in this growing season. And when it comes time to scout for aphids, make sure you're out there and keeping keeping those thresholds in mind and making sure we just manage those and as best we can. Yeah, good call out. And Brian, we've, we've kind of had a few light aphid years. I, I, I hope we have another light year, but I just feel like we're maybe a little bit overdue to have them uh, show their ugly face here at higher levels again. Yeah, and especially with, I think, late planting and seed treatments, there'll probably be some interesting things we do see this year uh, with aphids as we go. So uh, Allie, we have our Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy training sites that come up in uh, August this year. Uh, could you just go through a little bit of sites and dates and uh, all that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. You know, the Pioneer Growing Point, Growing Point Agronomy training sites are a great opportunity to come and see, you know, in person some of the products that our sales reps are out discussing throughout the growing season. I think it's one thing for a person to say something to you, but it's another thing to go out and see some of these topics we're discussing in person. And so uh, um, you can feel free to talk to your Pioneer sales representative and they can certainly give you these dates, but we just wanted to, to mention what the dates were to you today. So August 14th through 15th in Henning, Minnesota, August 17th through 18th in Lee Center, Minnesota, August 21 through 22 in Claremont, Minnesota, and August 23 through 24 in Fountain, Minnesota. So we look forward to seeing you all at these very informational Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy training site days. All right, thanks, Allie, and that's a wrap for Episode 8 of 2017. This show is recorded from the Agronomy Bunker Studio in Zabrota, Minnesota. It is produced by Brian Buck and Josh Schaffner. This is a bi-weekly podcast. Thanks for listening, and be sure to tune in next time.